In Creo Parametric, you can model a regular tetrahedron, which is a pyramid shape, which has a triangle base, and all the sides of the tetrahedron have the same length. I'm doing this in Creo 7 so that most people should be able to open up and access the model. I'm also basing this off of a web page, instructables.com, how to create a regular tetrahedron in 3D CAD, in which they did it in SOLIDWORKS Inventor, but it's the same process in Creo Parametric. Anyhow, let's start off by creating a brand new part. And for the name, I will call it Tetrahedron Creo 7. And I will use my standard default template and click the OK button. My part is started. Let me turn on my datum plane display. I'm going to start with a sketch on the datum plane called top. So I will click on it and then use the sketch button from the mini toolbar. And let me look right at my sketch plane. Let's turn off our datum display to unclutter the screen. I don't even need my spin center. Now I will go to the palette to grab a polygon and it is a three-sided triangle. Let me double click on it and then drop it on the screen. And let's double click on that number and I'll use a number like 100. And I will grab the drag handle and just let it snap into my sketch references. There you can see it. Let's hit the check mark to complete importing the section. I don't need the sketcher palette anymore. And I will hold down the right mouse button to get to the check mark in order to complete my sketch. And the second step, we are going to extrude this. And I'll start with the depth of 100. This is obviously not a pyramid shape. It is not a tetrahedron. But the important step is going to the Options tab. And we're going to add taper to this. Right now, the taper is going to the outside. Like, let me drag it so it goes to the inside. Let me start off with a value like, eh, that's a little too much. I want to leave it so there is a little bit of a tip at the top indicating that this is not yet perfect. The important thing is I'm getting this dimension for the taper that I am going to drive with a relation. So let's, let's hit the OK button. And I am, eh, let's change the names of that dimension. Let me go to the extrude feature and then go to the edit dimensions command. And then we have this dimension here, which is the 13 degrees. I can change the name of it right from here where it says D4. I'm just going to call that draft. And let me deselect everything. I just like to change the names of my dimensions so that someone else picking up this model can figure out what's going on. Now let's write our relation to turn this into a tetrahedron. I will go to the model intent overflow menu. Here's the relations command. You can also get to it from the tools tab. Here we have relations. Let me pick the extrude. And here we have that draft angle. This draft is going to be equal to, and let's see, this should be a positive value, I guess, because of how I created the draft angle feature in there. So let's try the value of 90 minus, and then we're going to use the arc cosine function. Uh, there's a definition for this angle based on geometry. And if you're not sure what the arc cosine function is, well, you could use this f of x button. And you have all the different available functions in here. But way up at the top, here we have arc cosine. So I will double click on that and paste it in here. Let me add some spaces in here for clarity. And so it is going to be the arc cosine of one third. Now you could just enter in one slash three and you would be on your way. But there is a way of getting the exact value of an expression in Creo Parametric rather than having this round off to 13 significant digits. digits we can add a parentheses around the one third in order to use the exact value. Now you don't have to do this, but this is just like a little 
extra gravy. So let me put the other parentheses in here. So 90 minus the arc cosine of one third in parentheses. Let's verify this. Relations have been successfully verified. I will click OK and then OK. And now we need to regenerate the model. You can do that from this button down at the bottom of the screen. You could also go to the model tab and hit regenerate. It is also the keyboard shortcut of control G. And now we have an exact regular tetrahedron. And if you want to check that, well, let's go to the analysis tab and we can measure the length. And so the length of this edge over here, hey, it's 100. The length of this edge over here, hey, it's 100. This is 100. This is 100. You can repeat that however many times that you want in order to verify that all the edges are the same length. Let's close out of there. If I want to have the volume and surface area reported on the screen, I need to calculate that, and I would need to do my mass property. So before I even do that, I need to assign a material. I can right-click the top node in the model tree, and from the pop-up menu, I can choose Edit Materials, and let me go to Legacy Materials, and I'll grab something standard like steel and add it to the model. And this little blue arrow indicates that it is the material in the model, so that's good. If I expand materials over here, you can see that we have steel. Now let's go to our mass properties, and we can choose the preview button to see what the different values in here are. If I go to the, wait, let me go back over here. Let's see. I want to change this from quick to feature. And then from the feature tab, I can create the parameters I need, volume and surface area. And let's see, I can change the name of the feature to make it easy to remember. Let's just call it mass and click the OK button. So now I have that feature that has the two parameters that I can report on the screen. Let's go to the annotate tab. I'll create a flat to screen annotation. And let's go to the note command, drop it on the screen over here. And let's see, I'll turn on my caps lock to type in volume and then colon. And so it's going to be ampersand, which means grab a parameter. And the parameter in this case is called volume and then colon. FID, which is short for feature identification, then you'll put in the underscore and the name of the feature. That's why I use a really simple name like mass. And then in here, let's put in the space and let's see, we also want the, you know, I want the surface area first. Let me go to, let me go to the text editor. Just do it in this dialog box instead. And let's see, surface area, and then ampersand, and I'll put in surf underscore area, colon, FID underscore mass, and click the OK button, and let's make that big enough to see. Let's change that to a value of 8. So there you can see that we have our surface area and our volume for a given edge length. You want to see the edge length on the screen as well. Let's go to the sketch feature, show annotations, and this one, click the OK button. So there you can see how the surface area and the volume relate to the length of an edge in your tetrahedron.